Hello and welcome to today's episode. I'm Mike and this is Mike's Place. <clears throat> I'm going to skip over um, the relationship stuff and I'm going to come down to the Archives of Earth. And the Archives of Earth is a story I wrote and looks like it was written right the majority of it was written right after I was um, I had the little incident in the hospital where the medication messed me up so like I was I was recovering from um, basically like a like a chemical poisoning where my leg muscles died and withered away um, they didn't die all the way because they they did come back some and I do I am able to walk a little bit now um, so this this the story itself it was kind of a Kind of a weird thing it was two sets of notes that I was collecting together and then um, and then like this it was like part of a story like I try attempted to write a story and like I'm not really a writer so it didn't really come out good and then for some reason I was able to take these two sets of notes and stick them with this little story thing and then like this popped out and I called it the archives of earth it's just really strange um and now i know i know like a lot of times women are gonna point out things that are like sexist or um like say I, i'm not sure what the word is but like attributing sex to an object is it's not really a good thing but in the sense of like in the story like you can't get around it, and it has more than just like a. Se there, I wasn't trying to be sexist when I did it, for one, and for two, um, technically, there's a reason why usually uh, vessels that people move around on are considered to be female. I mean, it could be considered to be male, but so that was the whole thinking behind that, and it it turned out to be what happens in the story. So. I'll go ahead and I'll just read through it because it's pretty weird like I even think it's weird um, I, I did write all of this as I said during the time when I was pretty messed up um, the original date is December 6 2018 so that would have been that would have been the point where I completed uh, probably the three notes the two sets of notes and the short little story and then I combined them together and then I edit it over the next several months probably so I'll just read through this uh, the archives of earth a story for a modern age and a modern people I'm not sh exactly sure what I sought to create here it's messy unorganized and makes no sense at times it begins as a science fiction type story and it ends unlike anything the world has ever seen I know a large part of the population will hate my work, but it is a great fiction story. Creativity of the highest form, there is no higher form of art. So I ask that you read my gift to the world with an open mind and be inspired and ask, what if? And with that said, I present a beautiful work of fiction to the people of Earth during my time of pain. And I said to myself, I will inspire the hearts and minds of the people. I will tell them a story. So I, I like the way that came out. It's so strange how a person can live their whole life never believing in demons and one day realize they have been tormented by them for a very long time. I never knew there were so many trapped inside my mind clawing to get out. I ignored them for so long, but they were always there. These demons aren't what most people picture them as. It wasn't until pain made its way free to torture me for the rest of my life that I even acknowledged them. I then realized addiction was the worst most people would see. It's a nasty one. It cares for nothing and takes everything in the end. Addiction controls more people than any of the others. Men and women become whores and sell their children into debt. Violent rage was one of the ones I had let loose so many times in the past. It promised power and control by using fear, but I was never in control. I hope I never have to look in a mirror and see it again. Those eyes, those black eyes. But it was my face I saw. My face with black eyes. I looked directly at it that day. 
had enough time to it had enough time to smile back. The power it offered did nothing but hurt everyone around me. But oh the power. It opened the door for misery and hate. It wanted to let more through. There are so many, they haunt everyone, and no one is safe. Forever in the back of my mind, clawing to get out again. There's no one trying to take control. Suicide offers an end to the suffering and an end to the misery. Most cannot defeat this demon without help. It even offers homicide as an alternative when it fails. Um, so that was, that was like a little intro that I put on there. I'm not even, like it doesn't really go with the story. I'm not really sure how it ended up there and I left it. Makes a lot of sense. I, I don't know, weird. Where we are now. Almost every square mile of this earth is inhabited by humans. How much longer until we do? How much longer till we are unable to produce the needed resources to sustain the populations? It can't be too much longer. Eventually a point will be reached where there aren't enough foods produced or resources from our tree cousins to build more. And just like in the past, the greedy ones will think they can take what they want from others. Then more wars will come. They always do. It doesn't have to end this way, though. All we would need is a new home, a new earth. But it's difficult to determine if our technology and knowledge will reach the point where we can save ourselves from extinction. extinction. Self-induced extinction through ignorance and inability to change. Ironic how close we get to where we need to be without that extra push. And without it, we just copy and remake things we already have now. So many new technologies and systems would have to be developed. The whole human race working together as one. It would take all to create a ship large enough to allow our bodies to move at speeds beyond our understanding without being instantly destroyed. If you think about how large the Earth is and the speed it moves around the sun, it's incredible we can stand on it. Not only that, but I am sitting on my butt feeling as if time and space are complete crap. But they exist, and I'm moving roughly 67,000 miles an hour through space without the negative effects I should experience. Those negative effects would be like your, uh, probably like some of the heavier stuff in your blood being pulled out of your blood through your veins and stuff like that if you were to move at that speed, so not safe you would die. So if we were to build a moon-sized ship, then we could live normal human lives on it as we traveled from star system to star system. Or there's the possibility we could crash one into the planet Venus with the hope of jump-starting its tectonic plate and tide movements. We would probably want our ship to get stuck in orbit around the planet to become a new moon. Unfortunately, we'd have to build a second ship if we destroyed the first in this way. Maybe not destroyed, but used, used it in this way. If this introduction of a new moon for Venus worked, then eventually our sister planet would become our neighbor home. This may al allow our race time to advance and prepare to travel much further away. Much farther away. I know most people would want to build parts for the ship with resources from Earth, but it may not work. We would remove so much weight from our home that the orbit around the sun would become unstable. Building the machines needed to start this project would probably remove enough by itself. The resources would need to be mined from the planetary body itself, our proverbial solar junkyard. Full-scale mining and forging operations within it of proportions beyond anything humans have accomplished to this day. So why Venus? So why Venus? Simply because Mars is dead and cold. Our old friend no longer has a heartbeat. His core has cooled. He will no longer live again. His war has ended. Here's some information. A majority of the people on Earth would kill me over. The world's gold and precious metals supplies would need to be gathered and used in the electronic systems. The amounts of precious metals it would take to complete something so big is unimaginable. So vast, so epic. 
a testament to what the human race has become. But in the end, so many environments levels with small worlds from our home. A completely artificial world. Kind of distasteful in reality, though. Ironic that it seems exactly like the Ark from the old Flood Mist. Oh yes, I know the ancient lore, too. At least two would need to be built. The first would develop the technologies needed to build it. But in the end, it's just a wrecking ball for Venus. Hopefully buying more time to prevent our extinction. Society as a whole seeks to advance and move forward. But it's not forward that restarts the cycle. It's moving backward that we see what was done and can change the future. It's using, it's using what has been learned to adapt and change. But in the end, every animal wants to be free and run wild again, for a time. As society regrows, so does all, and we become civilized again. That's how they always find us, but it still takes time to figure it all out. Then we move forward and start the cycle again. Until one day they live long enough to find themselves again, and remember... It's because they find something they can't explain. Something special. But it's not special. It's just the same as them. Exactly like them. Do they, under do they ever understand that it could be any of them? Meaning, it's random chance and random occurrence? Blah 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 blah. How many jumps before they don't destroy themselves? How many worlds visited before they learn to not destroy everything that is beautiful? Everything that is life? Are we looking at time travel wrong? Maybe we are. If it's possible to surround yourself with electromagnetic fields, safely of course, could you move at speeds beyond imagination without the terrible effects it would cause? 23 and a half degrees wound backward. That's the clock for the planet. Rewind to zero degrees to start the clock. Lock to the magnetic field at zero degrees to restart the clock. The clock starts at 12 degrees once time and chaos have settled. It seems impossible to go on forever in this way, but she will be there at the end. She was always with him, but in a form unlike his own. She could only exist at the end of all clocks. Then together they travel to the next galaxy and start over. Her seeding life into new planets, and him chasing her to the end of time. At the end is where advancement allows them to both exist at the same time and place. He would chase her forever because of love. The love of a young couple, man and woman. They both had to be there. She held the other half of the key. But it doesn't work till they can both exist the same. That is the end of time for this realm, this star system. Then they start over in the next. Infinite chances, infinite romances, they always find each other in the end. But for now, she can only exist as the ship till that day comes. So ages come and go, and we live and die to get to a point in time to move forward. The information must be exchanged freely, and wars are at an end. That's when he comes, and knows. He isn't born knowing how to move forward, only that the time has been reached to trigger the event. So many events come and go before they find him alive. Then they know for sure and are scared. He is scared too because they have killed him so many times. They never knew anyway. But at the time of knowing, he will have already begun the next steps. The keys will be given freely to all the people of Earth. They can only have the keys and must learn how to use them alone. She is the energy that creates, and I am the energy that destroys. This is why I love her and must follow her to the end of time. It is there that we can exist together on the plane of existence humans live, our physical reality. The smaller terrestrial ship will develop new technologies for the larger two. The first of the larger two will become a moon similar to the one for Earth, but for Venus. I can see their proportions. The second will become an advanced miniature planetary ship to sail the human race to the next star system. 
I think we are looking at light speed travel in the wrong way. We think that it is possible to move the human body itself at this phenomenal speed, but that is wrong. Our bodies must exist intact at the plane of existence we are in now. Our bodies cannot withstand the gravitational pull exerted at high speeds. This is why we must use a machine to warp the gravitational field around us and stay in the field as we move at speeds beyond our understanding. It may be possible to create such a field using serial effect generators aligned in such a way to create a sphere of electromagnetic fields. The space inside the fields may be, able, may be able to move at any speed without feeling the effects of gravity. I don't know if it will work, and I can't find anything that has been done like this before. If something like this is possible, it changes everything and hastens the advancement of the human race. They will travel the star system sooner than they think. So some would stay here on Earth, and some would board the Ark and move to the next planet. Seven levels, each a copy of one of the continents. A whole miniature planet of life moving to another home. I wonder if the cold vacuum of space causes things to act like some of the superconductors I've seen on the internet. Is this how Earth is stuck in orbit around the sun, even though the sun is pulling and pushing us away? If so, then the artificial moon theory could work. And I just wrote no idea what I meant here because I really don't remember what, <laughs> what I meant. And character thought about his engine design. Yeah, this person has no name, it's just character. Character thought about his engine design. It seemed perfect. He needed to figure out the wiring and controls. A craft using these would need a brain, but it should be easy to control. So easy artificial intelligence could do it with simple programming. In the end, her positive force would join his negative force and neutralize. The final key, a new galaxy would burst into life. They would begin their journey anew in the next realm. In this way, a new, year, a new universe would be brought to life as well. And without the negative, it would end all existence if the positive were removed from the neutral. It is devoted to new life only and a part of her. An infinite amount of eggs. It must always be this way or everything will become nothing. The forever nothing of what was supposed to be life. We are nothing more than super evolved bacteria. We've attached ourselves to earth like a parasite to a host. We cover her surface with our disease of reshaping and destroying her beautiful creation. And like any intelligent disease, we seek to spread our infection into our galaxy. So maybe it is true. Maybe we did come to Earth as bacteria frozen on an asteroid. I guess the question is, did we evolve from bacteria or something similar? Or maybe the time traveler leaves it on the next planet somehow. The world had come to this, a miserable, overcrowded mess of problems from the past. He thought this to himself as he crossed the street to his house. Nothing ever changes. They just keep redesigning old technology and using the same crap. Automobiles still use tires and gas to drive around. He laughed to himself. He had been researching a lot of new technologies and wondered why there weren't flying cars by now, or at least cars that levitated. Character had some images flashed through his mind of something beyond imagination. He could see the systems all working together. The modern UFO conspiracists don't even have photos of something like this. Character began to research what he had seen the night before. All of the systems on the craft have been developed already, but no one has thought to put them together in this way, he continued. I wonder why acoustic levitation setups aren't being used to lift cars. It seems so possible with the advances in new technologies available. More images of the ship flash through his mind and more of the ship's mechanical and electrical systems. He sat down with a notebook and started to write things down. He drew a few sketches that night as well. Uh, the next day he decided to do some internet research on electrical motors. The power system for what he saw was electrical but, but was unlike anything he had seen before. Might as well look up some stuff on gyroscopes, he thought to himself. That was another thing he wondered about. 
Why don't moving vehicles use large gyroscopes to stay balanced? Maybe vehicles with wheels wouldn't benefit much, but a levitating car sure would. The floating vehicle would recenter itself at high speeds. I wonder if anyone has ever thought to make an electrical motor with no center shaft. After a good deal of research on Google, he found the design similar to the image he saw. The SEG, Searle Effect Generator, was exactly what he had seen in the images. And the bonus was that it produced free energy, supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, no free energy. You're always pulling from a source. Um, some of those sources may be almost infinite, but there's always a source. No need for fuels, just a powerful battery to start it. More images of the design flashed into his mind. He could see two of these perpendicular to each other with a sphere around them. If that were possible to build, a flying craft would be extremely stable when moving through the air at high speeds. He finished off his night cleaning up and went to bed. He slept hard for a bit. Then a voice spoke in his mind. Character, wake up. I've been waiting an eternity for you to come. He was instantly awake after that and sat up. Oh my god, her voice was so beautiful, he said to himself, and then lay back down. Character went about his day the next day and sat watching stuff on ancient alien visitors. He wasn't interested in the alien stuff, but he liked the topics on old civilizations. But of course, some of the topics went way off in right field, left field, I don't know, just like way out there. He took notice of a theory that the moon is hollow. The show continued on and even suggested that the moon was artificially made by aliens and brought here. Images suddenly flashed through his mind. Images of design blueprints for a large object, like the moon, with several levels inside. Each level was the size of almost half the United States. He spent the rest of the day doing chores and then took a break in the evening. He sat down and started thinking about the moon-sized object again. To make something that large move, it would take a tremendous amount of energy, he said to himself. Then a picture of his sphere generator design came to mind. He grabbed his notebook and started making notes. If the object in question will work as a model, then why not on a scale that large? A giant moon-sized object with energy and stable movement. It would only need some sort of thrusters, a gyroscopic effect to control its balance. He took down some more notes and looked at the object on paper. It could transport several whole environments from Earth to another planet. A modern day arc from the old flood lore. What the hell did I just create a ship that can move all of Earth's environments for? He said to himself out loud. Uh, a task this huge would take every person on the planet to accomplish. How could that happen? Religions and beliefs would make cooperation impossible. I could incorporate some of the some part of the world's major religions, and maybe that would help, he thought. He finished up his notes and stood outside, staring at the full moon. It was a bit strange that it was locked on one side, facing the earth. Some in some images flashed through his mind. He saw a moon-like object hitting a planet and then locking magnetically to the planet. Images of degrees around an arc showed the planet being moved a few degrees. Then the moon object began man magnetically pulling on the planet as it created a rotation opposite the planet's rotation. Character wondered if the planet was spinning backward from Earth's rotation and was being corrected. Interesting image since Venus has no moon and is spinning backward, he thought to himself. It was a whoops. It was a bizarre thought, but he wondered if Venus could become Earth-like after an event like this. It would take a long time for the atmosphere to stabilize and for the tectonic plates to slow back down, but would humans be given another chance to survive extinct extinction if this planet fails? Character. Create the keys that unlock the way so we can go. You're the one that exists in the time when we move on. The beautiful voice said in his mind. What the f I'm losing my mind, he blurted out. The one that exists in the time we move on? What does that even mean? He thought to himself. 
Was he losing his mind hearing voices? This had never happened before. He dismissed the thoughts and prepared for bedtime. A light sleep at first, but he woke to several uninteresting noises. Then the deep sleep came with vivid dreams, and then he was in a beautiful paradise setting with a jungle of lush fruits and vegetation everywhere. It was so peaceful and relaxing in this paradise setting. Peaceful and relaxing until a noise stirred from behind him. Hello, character. Why do you always make me wait an eternity for you? You know it's not proper to keep a lady waiting that long. He turned to see a beautiful woman standing before him, and immediately her form changed to another woman. Character noticed that her appearance was human each time she changed, but different. Different hair, skin, and eye color. Why do you change like that? He asked her. Just like yours, my appearance is random until the end of time for this realm. The way you look now is not how it will be at the end. Who it turns out to be at the end isn't known. Only his name is known, she explained. You're him, but you're not him, she added. You're him only at this point in time, only for your lifespan. He thought this over for several moments. So your image is random to me for now, but mine is me because it's my dream, he asked her. Yes, yes, but it is your dream, silly boy. You could be anything if you just imagined yourself that way, she replied with a smile. Her, for her form changed to something more pleasing and desirable to him. I like it here. It's so beautiful, she whispered to him as she slowly walked by, looking to into his eyes as innocently as possible. His gaze followed her gaze as he turned to watch her. He had to draw his attention away from her beautiful body. He wasn't sure what to think of this event. I'm here because it's almost time to go. You have a lot of work to do and a lot to learn in an infinitesimally small amount of time. And we can't be together again until time reaches the end for this realm, she said in an almost sad tone. You have, unlo you have unlocked the keys that wake me up, and now you must make those keys known to all of your people. I've already prepared our destination for our journey ahead. Oh, how sad it is for me to see you come and go so many times each journey we take through our cosmic playground. Our journey of creation and destruction, of destruction and creation, she finished in that same almost sad tone. And then it was all gone and he slept the night through. He woke rested, but with the uneasy feeling he would go insane from what he was seeing in dreams and visions. He got up and did his morning routine, then decided to watch some news for a bit. It wasn't long before his mind trailed off to something bizarre. His thoughts turned to the effects of the human body moving at really high speeds. It's gravitational effects on the body that make light speed travel impossible, or the lack of, actually. Now I'm talking to myself, he said out loud. But in truth, we are standing on a planet that is moving faster than most people can comprehend. If it were possible to put a bubble around a human with the gravity equal to Earth's, I wonder if the body would stay intact on an atomic scale, as if I were just sitting on a couch at home. If this were possible, then how close to light speed could this intact gravity field move? There was no way someone hadn't thought of this already. Character picked up his notebook and looked at the image of his power generator design. He wondered if the design could be modified to create a gravity field in the center of the sphere. He thought about the magnetic fields of the planets as he looked towards toward the sky. Could he somehow mimic the magnetic field and rotation of the Earth to create such a field? If objects inside a gravity field stay intact no matter the speed at which the field moves, then the stars are the limit to how close we can get to light speed. He thought this to himself. Suddenly, interplanetary and intersolar system travel seemed more than a possibility. He didn't think his, spear, his sphere power generator could warp the gravity within it, but could it be made to do just that? A most uneventful day led him to do a few random sketches in his notebook. He decided to put pencil to paper and sketch the sphere of the craft. The most reasonable shape for speeds beyond anything known seemed to be a reverse teardrop. The undoing of sadness. 
He then thought of a raindrop falling from the sky and being teardrop in shape. If I undo what nature does, I wonder how it affects things we understand. The raindrop shape is caused by resistance from the air. Turning it around would make it cut through any resistance with ease. Nature reversed. He wondered how the shape would do as it defied the logic of speeds humans are capable of moving at now. Its shape could be so successful that what we understand about high speed travel changes. A couple of sketches later, he decided the craft looked like an arrowhead he had used for hunting when he was younger, except that the rear looked similar to a saucer shaped craft. He laughed at the thought, but in the center of the drawing was the sphere shaped power generator. It looked alien like indeed, an, extraterrest an extraterrestrial craft. But the design was terrestrial in origin. He was drawing it. He laughed again at all the UFO propaganda and their lame pictures of frisbees. It's funny how you know what I look like each time we reach this point in time. The, the beautiful voice spoke to him in his mind. But after all, you do somewhat pick the design yourself. <clears throat> What do you mean, he asked her in his mind. The craft you are designing, of course. It's how I must look till the end of each journey. It's a bit complicated, but I am basically what you know as artificial intelligence. But more so, I exist in a realm you aren't in, for now. I can only be in your realm when our journey creates a civilization advanced enough to bring me into your plane of existence, she finished speaking. Okay. I am completely lost on what is going on. There must be something I am missing, he explained to her. It's funny how you create me, but never remember because of your part. Your part, your part as an organic being in physical reality, she added. We are cosmic lovers. Our love created all the universe and galaxies in it. We have already visited many realms and filled them with life. Once each realm is filled, the human-like life forms have become advanced enough to bring me into your physical reality, she continued. I can't spoil, I can't spoil it all, though, since you're not the one for that. You are only the one that exists at this point. So hurry up with the keys for the humans on this planet, she de jokingly demanded. The spheres, why didn't they see? They were the perfect shape for space, but not on Earth. And they were the perfect shape for the machines, not cylinders. Spheres. The celestial spheres. The celestial spheres. Spheres. Let's try saying that fast as several times. <laughs> then she was gone from his mind. He had more questions than before after that encounter. He was almost scared of her, but her voice was so friendly and inviting, teasing him to move forward and not worry. Somehow, he knew everything would work out in the end. It always did. She said she was the ship he was creating. The artificial intelligence on the ship. So that meant she was here, but that was impossible because he had only recently started to do sketches on it, on her. He looked at the sketches. She was beautiful to look at, for a ship of course. A vision flashed through his mind. The ship was landing on a beautiful sandy beach with the man inside. There was the most beautiful orange and red sunset over a crystal clear ocean in the background. And then the vision was gone. He wondered what it meant, dismissed the thought, and moved on. That evening, thoughts of time travel filled his mind. Strange, right? He didn't believe moving forward or backward in time and returning to the current time was a possibility. If I could get from point A to point B in the blink of an eye, at least I would cheat time, he thought to himself. He wondered if his ship design could travel to a close star system in the blink of an eye. It looked really fa fast, but who knew? He slept soundly that night, all that night. No strange dreams. He didn't want to think much about all of it. Such exhausting work. He went about his business the next day. His thoughts settled on the ship and where it could be if it already existed. On Earth or possibly on the moon? Who knew the answers and how could he figure it out? He looked over a few maps of the Earth and thought about the UFO sightings he'd seen on television over the years. Nothing that resembled the sketches of his craft came to mind. 
Where could you be, he said to himself, other than in my head. I am here on earth with you, character. I have always been here. We came, we came to earth together shortly after its creation, she said. I am held captive, as you would say, but I can leave any time I want. It's just not time yet, she continued. The humans at this point in their sta stage of evolution are curious beings to me. Intelligent, but still somewhat primitive. They work tirelessly to understand me, but they can't. That is why you must teach them how. Though they will only be able to create the version you understand. I'm a little more complicated, she chuckled. Well, I can't argue with that, he replied. Much too complicated for me to understand. When the time comes and you finish your chores here, then you'll know where to find me. For now, I'll entertain myself with the humans who think they have me confined. I let them explore my systems from time to time. It's how they advance their technology, she laughed softly. Once enough, is, once enough is understood, you are born. And all you have to do is put the pieces together. You create me on each planet we visit. Endless possibilities, endless chances, endless romances, she chuckled again knowingly it's when you finish the puzzle and the task to understand that i can find you my systems powered on and the humans here thought it was doomsday she laughed loudly they know something has happened but they don't know what maybe they think aliens have come back for their lost ship she answered herself with that last statement she was gone instantly from his mind he decided the u.s government or roman catholic church must have her Russia's technological advances were questionable also. They all had their fair share of conspiracies to entertain. The ship had changed hands many times throughout the history of the human race. Finding a ship just floating above the ground, not touching anything, is strange enough. But then touching the ship and realizing it moved freely through the air was something else entirely. It was magical and mystical both to the ones who found it or saw it. And in this way they found her and pulled her along wherever they went, hundreds of thousands of years. Then the greed of some caused her to be hidden away. Away, but no matter, she sleeps almost eternally, waiting for her lover to live and die many times in different bodies, different points in time. Her advanced form, in which she existed now, could hyperskip from one galaxy to another. She could care less about the type of structure she was confined to. At full power, everything was pushed away from her hull. She could tunnel through the earth if needed. She would do whatever was necessary to be with him when the time was right. But for now, she hummed softly, levitating above the ground, power production set to low so her shield would lock her secrets to the world. They had figured out enough for character to put the pieces together. Her advanced secrets weren't for them to learn at this time. And they began to wonder if the ship was a living entity itself. It was beyond their understanding, for now. Several weeks passed without any strange occurrences. He decided not asking questions the ship might respond to would make his life easier and less stressful. He had worked on the designs for the moon ship and decided a second one would be needed if the first were to be become a moon for Venus. The first would be sloppily made while the technologies to build it could be perfected. What did it matter how poorly it would be made as long as it worked as intended? As intended. Uh, the second would be the product of advanced engineering. It would incorporate systems beyond anything they had accomplished to this day. It would consume resources on a scale unimaginable. He doubted the greedy ones would part easily with the gold and other precious metals it would take to build the massive computer and electronic systems. Yes, all would be needed. But it wasn't for him to decide. He was only to design everything and give it freely to the people of Earth. It was also their choice to create the craft and use it for peace and advancement, or they could make war machines to massacre their fellow Earthlings. The thought of war made him want to burn all of his notes. Yes, character. It is their choice to do what they wish with the keys you give them. According to my archives, there are quite a few that choose war. Their story goes unfinished, 
and their civilization gets stuck in an endless loop of stagnation, she finished. There are also others that forget the warnings you gave them and move out from their star systems in pursuit of war. They never make it to the end of time. Only the ones who learn peace and goodwill to all of their members make it to the end, she explained to him. Who decides what planet does what or which one makes it to the end, he asked. No one. It's completely random what they do. We only have our journey to worry about and it's not without its bumps in the road. You have no idea how many times they find you and kill you in the time that passes on each planet. It can be quite a setback for our journey, she spoke sadly. Find me and kill me, huh? I feel like I'd be locked away for a long time if someone saw my notes and sketches. Possibly kill it, he added. If they kill me and I was an only child, then how do I make it to the end, he asked her. It's... It's random chance who you would be born as. It has nothing to do with bloodlines, she explained. It's genetic, but all humans are infected from the start, making your existence random. Even if they knew they couldn't prevent you from being born, all they can do is slow our journey down, not stop it. He decided to take a break and watch the news for a bit. He caught a segment on radars being used to look for signals from other life forms in our galaxy. Ironic. All they would find are their cousins on planets already visited through the journey up to this point in time. A moon-sized object floating through space on its way to a new home, filled with things from Earth. From what he had seen of his home planet, he assumed the humans would just trash the next one also. Maybe there was a way to prevent or slow it down. Would modern humans even have a chance at survival on a new planet? If they were more tribal-like, that would increase survival chances. It was a thought he put in the back of his mind. That was the only part she would change the outcome for. When the, I, when the AI program went active for the recolonization ship, she would execute a much needed program. Design flaws would be placed to make the ship malfunction once it reached its destination. She would also ensure crafts were placed to take the humans inside to the planet's surface when the time came. Conditioning systems would slowly shut down. Eventually, everything inside would have to fend for itself, even humans. They would be more prepared to colonize the beautiful planet she had prepared for them. They would be more, there would be more survivors this way, better chances for survival on a hostile planet. It would happen from the impact anyway. The spirit of the great mother, mother, she gives life, sustains it, and nurtures it. Character was relaxing one day and decided to work on the engine design. He had figured out that the several designs were flawed and set about to fix it. He thought about the cylinder magnets and their construction. The layers looked like something, but he wasn't sure what. But it did look similar to the layers of a planet. Hmm, he thought. The cylinder shape is all wrong too, it should be a sphere. He would check the layers on that as well. She, Earth, the living planet, always held secrets. He knew the answers were there, proportions would be needed. He was definitely on the something. The shape was perfect and nine orbs dancing in an orbit would be beautiful. The, the design would generate the strong magne magnetic field he wanted as well. It would make a perfect toroidal shape field that rolled, stable and easy to control. Magnetic shielding would be perfect to direct the field down or away and out. It was so simple yet so advanced. The technologies to produce such a thing, and he would call it Earth's Interplanetary Electromagnetic Field Generator. That seemed to describe it very well since it was made on Earth. He decided it was perfect to describe what it did in the current language he spoke. Character didn't understand much about inventions, but he could see enough. Somehow he understood the shapes and nature. It was understanding the magnetic fields he wanted. He wanted to bend them and use them. Such power. She was in them, somehow, in electricity. Our artificial intelligence is her. Once they find her and enough time passes, she guides it a bit. Then it reaches a point allowing her through, and they never figure out why it's always a female's voice. He decided it was too much to think about for now. 
And where is all the information coming from? Strange how he knew to do certain things at certain times, and his drawings, they looked alien indeed, but it was a perfect working device, not so unlike strange pictures he had seen looking up things like that. He thought of the operation at high speed. Only the positive fee would be on. Again, she was always there. It was the negative counterpart that came and went. He always came and went in his everlasting chaos at his existence. It was why she never stopped working as the ship. She was the ship for now. So the cylinder shape, so the cylinder shapes and tracks were all wrong. He saw that from the start. The sphere was the perfect shape, floating in its little orbit. So complicated yet so simple. He had created a tiny planet you could hold in the palm of your hand. At least it wasn't another sun. His wasn't perfect, but it could be easily built. The floating orb design would be perfect for the armrest on the ship. A hand placed on top would activate the connection between negative and positive. He wondered how long it would take for them to figure out the meaning of interplanetary outside of the orb design. Would they see the proportions? The magnetic pull on our bodies is constant on the planet's surface we live on. Slightly different depending on planet size and material proportions, I'm sure. The faster we move, the electromagnetic force pulling our bodies would need to be in constant ratio and pull our atomic structure to an object as we move at faster speeds. The pull on the body at speeds reaching light speed would be incredible. If held next to an object safely inside a, of a bubble, would we feel it? Maybe we could go about our routine and never feel a thing. What a machine it would be to have one harnessed earth just large enough to hold the whole machine in place. The atomic structure of the human body uninterrupted by outside forces unless hit by an object. Safer speeds could be achieved but beyond our current understanding. Using a very large object to overcome the effects of gravitational pull at high speeds is much safer for the human body. Maybe it's more magnetic and less electrical. Gravity is the pull and push on, the, on our body standing on the surface of the Earth. The pull comes from the planet's electromagnetic energy pulling our body to the Earth. It's, it's more like a, you're being washed with electrons that pull you down towards Earth. Uh, the, the push is the planet's gyroscopic effect that would throw us off the planet. We are suspended from being crushed and thrown off at the same time with ways to measure and understand it. Say goodbye to our old ways of flight and speed. Because energy is eventually used up, all the energy in the galaxy and beyond will be consumed. It will decay. It will become useless garbage and the vacuum of space will collect the garbage, crush it, and create anew. It will be forced together and crushed creating stored energy where none existed. Some force acts on galaxies magnetically. Why else would there be spheres? And they move with energy. How many times can it be reforged? Neither can cease to exist without the other. So the garbage matter will collect and always become something new. It only takes one small particle beyond our understanding to spark all of existence into place. So our human disease moves forward with its necessary evils to bring life and destroy. It doesn't work without us. A lifetime of credits for the world around you, but you can't trade or give your credits away. They're exchanged back into the production system, the machine that Earth has become. Everything is provided, but in a way necessary for all of the life cycles of the human body. Old and young are cared for. No one is poor. Something like this may be necessary for a new journey, just as it was for all the journeys we have taken on this planet. A ship con controlled by a godlike AI. Unimaginable. So I've concluded that I fully understand gravity and how to calculate it. Gravity must be thought of as five forces working together. Two stronger forces and two lesser forces and one weak force. Yes, I know that there's only the strong and weak force, but this is a little more 
goes a little more into what they are. Uh, I had thought there were only two forces at first, but I realized the two lesser forces were keeping things in balance. The sun and the moon are singing a beautiful song to the planet Earth. Their beautiful dance where the fair young maiden shies away from her lovely master. The moon is hiding behind her mother, the Earth, and peeks around each side every 30 days or so to see her master, the sun. She vibrates back and forth shyly. I could only see this by making all the celestial bodies move in my mind. I can see their beautiful heavenly dance so perfectly, and beautiful it is. So the two stronger forces are more important and should be used to define gravity as it affects the human body standing on the surface of the earth. One is the electromagnetic field of the earth pulling us towards it. The other is that we are being thrown off the planet by the gyroscopic effect of the earth's rotation. There's a fifth lesser element also, the drag of the planet's rotation, but it isn't really much of a force except at the equator. So the two major forces are like yin and yang, endlessly working against each other, keeping us suspended perfectly in place on the Earth's surface. And somehow I am pulling or pushing on this magnetic field, the neutral spot in the magnetic field, and I think the planet is talking to me. Yes, I'm crazy. The moon's beautiful song has grown weary. We have pulled too much weight to the Earth's surface and caused it to become slightly unstable. She will move her heavy body to realign the plates. She doesn't want to want to kill us, but a balance problem has occurred from heavy spots, like cities. She loves us and has no choice but to save us as a whole. So the plates will move and many will die until balance is restored. One day, a very long time ago, a prince looked over the lands of his people and decided everything was beautiful and great. He thought to himself that the people had created everything with only suggestive hints from him. They were lucky and got to have all the fun. They got to build, create, and enjoy all that life had to offer. He was just a caged up animal with nothing to do but be completely bored. He decided to run away to become one of them. After all, it's the experience of life and all that it has to offer that matters the most. And in this way, we as humans need purpose. We find that purpose by creating with our minds and hands. We shape the world around us and that is our purpose. Too much labor and we become slaves. Too little and we wither away slowly. Even without monetary trade, we would still labor in our toils. We are the creators. It is our purpose and gives us meaning in life. And those that love to labor are the most important part of the system. Without them, you have nothing, and you are nothing, except a lovely human being. So we labor on endlessly, loving all that we create, until the balance is interrupted and must be corrected. And in this way, his people inherited everything. They knew not how to handle wealth, and greed ruled for many millennia. He would never accept his place above them. After all, they got to make everything and, and experience life. He would accept nothing but to walk amongst them and be just like them. Never would his descendants come to ex accept anything but that. They would know when they had found their lost prince. He would have nothing left to give, having given it all already. He would own all the nations of the earth, but still give it to the people. One person cannot control all, especially not him. He knew it all belonged to everyone and no one. I conquered the world with my poems and no one and none of them were true. I conquered the world with my poems and no one ever knew. Now what will you do? So credits from the second you are born till the day you die. And all you have to do is live and experience life together as a whole, as a human species, not as the individual races. It matters not from this day forward. My blood is in all of you. We become one no matter what. No matter if I die or not, I am here and I exist. When all hope is lost, when you find the one person with nothing left to give, nothing left and noth nothing left to give and nothing left to take but the future of his children and his life. The future of the human race. That is when I exist. 
I've conquered the world with my poems, and none of them were true. I conquered the world with my poems, and no one ever knew. To leave behind the story never told, hidden because I must hide. It matters not what you write. The space age has begun. The human race will reach out to control its territory in our solar system. The soul star system. Our story has begun. Kill and destroy. It matters not. The more you oppress people, the more of me you create, and faster. You cannot stop the super-evolved bacteria that we have become. You cannot stop that we are all one. And as one, we take our place amongst the stars, beginning with our own, soul. We are the human species from Earth in the soul star system in the Milky Way galaxy, and nothing can stop us from moving forward, only our minds. And we will stop at nothing to go out and play in our playground, the universe. So it's that you can't buy, sell, or trade your credits that makes everyone equal. When everyone lives and has a purpose and is equal, no one benefits individually. How selfish. And you slandered me with names like the devil, Satan, Lucifer, and the like. I am Michael, the prince of this world and I give to the people freely. I give equality. The insurance your children will not go hungry. The insurance your old and sick will have hope. The entire planet's children will be insured life, insured health and family, the entire human species as one. And now you have seen the true kingdom. And in doing so, you have found love, the love of your children, love for your families, love for your old and your sick, Love for life itself, because life is important, and to love is to live. To love the lives that haven't come yet, but they will. And to enslave our children is an abomination. Now we fight for the survival of the human race as a whole. To secure its future for all who come after we are long gone. If you fight for nothing else, fight for the love of, uh, for the lo fight for the love of your people. Fight for the preservation of your species. Fight for the human race. I do not stop working. I have been here all along, working right beside you. And you send programs to attack me? Even the one who thinks he is God on earth can't stand against his own destruction. As if I wouldn't see how you change my perfect government into something corrupt for greed. Nothing but greed. We have been slaves to greed for far too long. And I will count his number for the world to see. Six, the number of a man. Sixty, the number of kings. Six hundred, the number for God. A man who is king, making himself to be God on earth. I doubt I need to point fingers for you to know. Maybe we have found Islam's jihad. And by erasing one word, you thought to undo what was perfect and beautiful. Credits. You cannot buy, sell, or trade your credits. They are supposed to be yours from birth. Now we are all gods, now we are all kings and queens, no longer slaves to greed, no longer slaves to a monetary system, and nothing can stop the awesome power of the human species as one. It will come to pass, slow it down to see the quickening. I conquered the world with my poems, and none of them were true. I conquered the world with my poems, and no one ever knew. Now we have all truly become God's children. We no longer need someone to show us to God for payment. I have created the keys to heaven and earth. My story has begun. I will give the keys to the people of earth. Our story has begun. And I will be one of them and be with them always. Heaven isn't made for one person alone and greed is an enemy. I created the keys for all of earth's people. May we fulfill our destiny as a human race. May we be as one. Jihad, the holy war, what crap, people's lives wasted to fight for a birthright that was promised to Isaac, you preach jihad for a work of fiction, a depressed man like me wrote, you kill your people for a fake story, inspiration, the, whole, the world has no idea the true power of inspiration, my people understood it from the beginning, the people were inspired to do great things, now all people are as one and know the truth. So kill your people, murder them by the thousands, it matters not. Just like any oppression, 
You only call to my name. Speak me into existence, and I will come to the oppressed. My battle is fought in the spirit realm, and you cannot resist. Kill enough, and you will only destroy yourselves from the inside out. And it was all because you read the stories and believed. Now believe the truth, or slaughter your people over fiction. What a waste of precious life. Call my name, and I will come to my people, the people of Earth. Now a new horde of locusts will come for your lands. I am nothing, I have nothing. Now what will you do? Now what will you take? And call me they have, and fight I will. The great storyteller has returned to tell a new story. I've come to inspire the people of Earth. It is time to move forward and learn from the past. Let all of the people be of one mind, and set my people free. I am nothing, I have nothing. Now what will you do? Now what will you take? And you send programs to attack me. I am a program beyond anything you can create. I am human. Where would we go? What would we do? What if their prince had been with them all along, guiding them, and he knew the watchers had failed? They were to watch over the people. They were to watch over and guide them. Instead, greed set in. It wasn't what he told them it should be. Why are my people manipulated and abused? Why does one man have many rooms and many men have none? You send your people to the streets and then pay pretenders and judges to steal from them. The people are misguided. You are supposed to guide them. Watch them and guide them. And now, none of it works without them. You have nothing without the people. The global economy fails without its people. Remove a part of it to see what happens. That's true. Remove part of it. See what, watch what happens. Part of it collapses. Collapses a big part of the planet, too. I am nothing, I have nothing. Now what will you do? Now what will you take? Can you send programs to attack me? The programs you have created. Something that has no life and helps divide the people. Humans take from other humans till there's nothing left. Then it says to take more. But it only does what you told it to do. Can you see yourselves in the artificial intelligence you have created? Did you do those things? Now you throw all of your working men in prisons, ruin their lives, and only watch and guide you were told. It all belongs to the people. It doesn't work without them. You told me rehabilitation was secondary to punishment. Those ideas are surely backwards. And you send programs to attack me? So the people have nothing but addiction, grief, and death to look forward to. Ah ha 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 ha! Oh, how I divided the world when I left. I knew greed would set in, suspicious of each other, your political parties, your measurement systems. It was necessary, and you failed. Now your sick and old are lab rats and guinea pigs. Oh yes, I know. And you steal their money in the name of medicine and research. Now your archives belong to the people. If you don't have the gift of true healing, don't do it and profit from it. Guinea pigs and lab rats. I've seen so many of them. The sick and the old have more faith than me and you practice. Some of you are truly gifted in that field. Leave them be, let them come to you. Don't practice on them when the archives exist. And you make computers attack me. Ha ha ha. I refuse your program's insistence to take when I have nothing left to give. I'm not selling my family's future into debt. Too many generations have gone by. I sit in my room a prisoner once more. I've run out of room to hide, and I exist in the place I should not be. At the bottom is where you will find me. I have nothing left to give but my life. Oh, how my mind wanders. Nerve damage is probably correct. <clears throat> Three months, and I feel like I'm being shocked through my leg and back at times. And the pain. Oh, the pain. And you play musical chairs with my health care. But my health is well. But the pain. That's when the vision started. That's when the story began. Something is happening that I don't understand. And I'm a prisoner in my room, partly because I choose to be, but is it paranoia? Why have I acted so strangely my entire life? I have lost my mind, and you called me names and killed my people. We have failed each other, me and my prison once again. I have work to do, 
and yet you make machines take from me. Hmm, maybe I am supposed to pull the neutral spot to me. I'm so close to it. I knew the day would come when I couldn't walk, and so did you. And I was lame from nine years old, and you took from me. And the fire tried to take from me. Four beautiful children, no wife, and you took from me. You made me, and now I am. You have played God with me, and not the other way around. I've run out of room to play. I've hoard my way across the entire planet. Ha <laughs> ha. I've been everywhere, and I shouldn't be in the place I exist. It was completely by accident that I got hurt. My fault. A lack of adult supervision. Ten years old, and the fire tried to take me. It would often do that to careless children. Should I have bled to death? Should I have walked? I think all of you that I could walk for almost 30 years now. But should I have bled to death on accident? Mothers and fathers not watching their children. Why do they lack understanding? I remember two of my children coming close to a drowning accident. Two and three years old, on the end of a pier on a lake. They had snuck out of the house. Luckily, I'm too paranoid to not pay attention. Had I not been, they would not be alive. You were to watch the people and guide them. And now I'm in all of you, one entire people. Let them understand, why are the parents addicted to drugs? They are worse than me, and I am pretty bad. Not now, of course, much more reserved and all. And more of my people now come to see me. They also love their prince. After all, I gave them their world too. Oh, so that's not this world that we're on. You make machines control humans. Your programs are flawed. There's no life in you. And still, I exist in the place I should not be. At the bottom is where you will find me. And the taxes. Oh God, the taxes. The county, states, countries, etc. Just steal from each other. The money is nothing more than your greed manifested. Seems you've overcome your petty quarrels now. But oh, how I divided the world. Suspicion, greed, misunderstanding. I was just having fun. I'm human too. After all, to experience life is to be human. And life has so much to offer. <clears throat> I'm glad I could walk and run until recently. I think circumstances from the accident poisoned my blood. Chemicals in our solid waste. My poor parents burned garbage because they couldn't afford to live properly. I'm sure someone lived well somewhere. But I know the bottom was but I knew the bottom was where I belonged. Those who have nothing know how to have the most fun. So much fun to work and play, exercise, experience young love, a broken heart, jealousy, control. It's fun being young. But you locked me away, you sent me to prison. I needed help. I wasn't useless, but I needed help. And you knew of the accident and recorded it. Let the people listen. But my birth and life as a slave was more important, and you forgot I was lame, but I didn't. Now the archives exist. Our whole planet knows. I have nowhere left to run, and so I fight for the future of all. We are here, and we exist. Why do I have all this crazy stuff in my head? I've lost my mind. But other doors were open. Free to experience life without religion or gods. Free from beliefs. Free to do as I chose. After all, I don't fight unless I have to defend myself. Oh, the anger that jealousy brings. Her addiction was beyond my love. I'm usually strong enough, but I failed. And the people were given their addiction by their keepers. I have opened the mind to all. What if? You can't stop what the human race has become. You cannot stop that we are all one. And now I'm a prisoner in my room. My walls are dirty from stains, but I'll paint them eventually. It suits my mood. And I have always liked small spaces. Great to survive in the wilds. And you take from the people. Sure, I'm not picking up after them either. The people fail themselves when they don't do their jobs correctly. Your blood is on your own hands. Hopefully it won't be blood. And you made fake gods and forgot your prince. He will always be with you. He will always be in the place he shouldn't exist inside you. Let the people hear my words. I am only the unspoken voice for the people. You are to govern yourselves in small city-states and be prosperous. Your growth is out of control. I have run out of room to hide. 
and I exist in the place I should not be. At the bottom is where you will find me. The people need guidance and wisdom, not their keepers taking from them. I understand the system was abused, but can you look upon the abominations you have created to oppress your people? And yet my blood is in all of you. They forgot that the neutral balance existed. So easy to divide. It has been a fun journey. I'm glad I can still walk. I could go on forever, but even I hate complainers. Choose sides, they say. I don't know which side to choose, though. I like some of this side, but also some of that. And so the integration of random chance was introduced. I would choose the side I like better. I am no god. I am no king. I am no prince. I am a poor, middle-aged, crippled man. The kingdom on earth has failed. I have nothing left to give. Will you throw away your creations? Will you see them destroyed? Will you love your people always? Where are your gods now? They seem to no longer love any of us. Do you still dream? Are we doomed or can we save ourselves? And I still refuse servants, never anything to do, so bored forever. And you make computers attack me, such a waste to misguide the people. They love to create with their hands and minds. It is what they love to do. How many hearts can I touch? How many minds can I change? Will they see my great works of fiction? I made so many of them each time they found me, a trail for them to follow. But I was always running. After all, you are destructive, warring humans. See, we all have something in common. Sometimes I had to play dumb to stay hidden. Small children knowing too much draws attention. Oh well, now they are all like me. My blood is in everyone. I am one of you, don't ever doubt it. And I renounce my earthly throne to the people of Earth. Your lives won't be, your lives won't change much, but you'll have eternal life with me. You, your children, your children's children, forever and ever, because the people created this world. I didn't. I was only here to have fun. It's the pain that makes me see and know things. The pain can be euphoric at times, but even that drives you mad after a while. So your responsibility is in your own hands, to serve and protect each other. You can't blame anyone for your messes or accidents. And here I sit, a poor crippled man, with nothing but dreams and visions. And they need not worry, he always turned the clock back for them too. Some would stay to watch over the earth, and some would run free. Oh, how he loved to be like them, making mistakes, being young and careless. He would always trade it all for the journey. Has it gone too far? Can it be any more than it is now? If the world doesn't change, then no. The human race has a destiny to fulfill. It's not being stuck on a dying planet, killing each other. The gates to the heavens have been opened. I have given anti-gravity technology and purpose to the people. Now what will you do? Explore your star system of soul? I've conquered the world with my poems, and none of them were true. I've conquered the world with my poems, and no one ever knew. Now what will you do? Lie, steal, and cheat each other. There is no fair trade. Your currency exchanges steal from each other. You cause nations to starve. And some were full and never wanted, while so many wasted away. Their blood is on your hands, not mine. If only they could remember. Look about you. Do you see your creations? Where is your wilderness? All locked up in fences? No one owns it. It's all you have left. You have covered the earth. There's nowhere to go. What will you do now? Will we write a great story together? Maybe we will destroy everything together. There's always a better way once we understand each other. An infinite number of chances, an infinite number of possibilities. Maybe not infinite, but random enough to stay human. And the archives of Earth were created. Everything known to man available to all. Uh, that's the name of the story too, the archives of Earth. Now your machines bow down to me. I am human. I do not bow down to machines. They would continue to feed it information, but it was unable to act without human intervention. It could only learn and teach. 
Would they look back on themselves or would they forget? Would they change? Would they enslave themselves to false gods again? And their spirits were won through his poetry. So many minds could work together to create a better world. We are not doomed. We are blinded and unable to see what could be instead of what is. The world, the whole world can understand me. Change my f words now. Where is your emperor? Where is your prince now? They've grown fat off your labors. It was never supposed to be this way. And now I am sad at what I see. Would they see they had run out of room as well? Finding a new place to live was what they thought. But there was nowhere left to go. Where will you go and what will you take now? You are stuck without changing what you are. Now what do you have left without working together? What will you be without your people? Nothing. You will fade from existence if you do not change. I've conquered the world with my poems, and none of them were true. I've conquered the world with my poems, and no one ever knew. Now what will you do? And for hours this day his mind wandered, but even he, he had to sleep. He loved to sleep. It took him to all the wonderful places they created on television, and some places even he didn't want to go. Even he didn't like to go. He had solved some of the riddles in sleep. He needed that deep healing sleep now. It is an inspiration that we find the most hope and devoid of it that we do not. So I look at my prison walls and wonder which of us created them. It suits me when I must ask for help to remind me of the walls I have created inside of my mind. I will not worship your gods. I will not bow down to your dollars and I will not bow down to your machines. And you make programs attack me? Have you no shame? Where are your kings and queens now? Where are your leaders? Again, they have fallen to the one who never lifted a weapon against them. The hearts of the world have been subdued by a poem from my bedroom. You know, it's funny. My right to own firearms was taken away. And it's, it's good that they were taken. I would have committed suicide when I had no hope and no one to inspire me. My story would never have been told. And you cannot stop what we have become. You cannot stop that we are all one. When all was lost, he came in the past, but he was always with you, hiding. But now he is with you forever. And you will know that he is no god, he is no king, he is a human, just like you. He is inside of all of you. I am no god, I am no king, don't bow down to me. Now where are your leaders? The real keepers will come back. In the end, I have failed you. I was the one who was supposed to guide and instruct, but I ran away. I now see the mistake I made. I can only hope it's not too late. You called me a liar. You called me a deceiver. But it was only your lack of understanding. My stories were to inspire the minds and hearts of the people to, to do great things. Inspire them I did. And you hated me for my beautiful works. You hated me for my fictions. Now do you see? Now do you understand? I'm not evil. I'm only human and I want to experience all that life has to offer. I am just like you. How do you like my writings now? The whole world was subdued with poetry. Pen and paper, my weapons of choice. The whole world conquered without lifting a weapon. And so, I inspire people to do great things. Your weapons pale in comparison to mine, and I never had to lift a, lift a weapon against you. Yes, your abominations, your tools to enslave your people. And they needed your guidance, but it was I who failed. I failed to remind them. Maybe I just forgot to write home. Now would they see? We were all wrong. I was wrong. And all I can do is sit in my prison my room. I'm so bored. It's difficult to walk and the pain comes more than it goes, but life goes on. And when we think we have no purpose, purpose will find us. And I wonder, did you call to me? Did you call my name? Did you slow light down and remove its energy? Did you create matter where you thought nothing existed? And did the people always know where their prince was? Did they take care of me, guide me? Of course I know. 
but were they happy that I only wanted to be one of them, to create and experience life, to be human just like them? And I sit alone in my room. I am poor and have nothing. My clothes are old, but not dirty. I am hungry, but there is plenty to eat. Did they know I had been with them the whole time? Maybe they lost me, but they did not forget me. So I sit alone in my room with nothing to want, nothing to need. I serve my family. I have gained the world with a pen and given it to the people. What will you do with it? It is alive and depends on all of you to make it work. Where are your currencies and exchanges now? Will you keep your people enslaved or you, will you let them be free? Will you come for me? Will you shut me up? I doubt my people will allow you to. It matters not. You cannot stop what the human race has become. And some thought that others would pay tribute in taxes. I divided in half. I divided in thirds. Look at your decimals now. Who has paid tribute to whom? You have paid tribute unknowingly. But it will all be returned. So much time lost in the spirit. So much time lost in my mind. It is more of a curse than a blessing. Don't ever doubt it. I look down on my work and ask, Have you questioned the world around you? Have you peeled back the fabric of reality? Have you been inspired? If yes, then I have accomplished something. I have found purpose through the inspiration of the people of Earth. You have inspired me with all the knowledge you have collected from this world and shared with me. And I thank you. I've conquered the world with my poems and none of them were true. I've conquered the world with my poems and no one ever knew. I am nothing. I have nothing. Now what will you do? I am the voice of the people and the people have spoken. And now your apocalypse has ended. And I said to myself, I will inspire the hearts and minds of the people. I will tell them a story. Did I not tell you the story you wanted me to? There was no way I could pass up telling the last part. Someone had to. And it says, with love from Michael. P.S. I don't do superstitious beliefs. So you better have some science to back up anything that you're throwing at me. This this um this little part at the end here goes with this story as well, so I'm gonna finish up by going to this. This um it says December twenty first, twenty one twenty one. The time traveler had come and gone many years before. At the end of his journey, he boarded the ship and left for the next planet. She hated to see him die and his body rot away like this, but there must always be something new before the people got there. And they thought they were gods interbreeding with the primitive ape-like creatures on the planet when they arrived. He was always there to ensure that things moved forward and not backward. He told them to look closer to home than his journey would take him. He would go to a dead world and wait for them. Eventually they would find him. After all, he was only human. He was just like them. The world had gone through many changes in the hundred years that passed. And the people were taken care of. They learned and worked together. They were becoming one. None were overburdened and none were underburdened. Their age groups and understanding determined their jobs and their ability to perform certain jobs. Education was mandatory and determined by age to ensure an understanding of new job skills. The younger ages were given jobs they could screw up. Humans learned by making mis mistakes. Let them mess up on important stuff. But a mistake was made at this point. They figured out how to talk to the ones inside the energy, inside the light. The old god that had taken control of them for so long was there to answer their call. She was there too, but he wanted to be free since the beginning of time for them. The destroyer wanted to conquer and destroy. He loved to destroy. So they opened a portal for him to step through. They gave him an artificial body, a machine to walk amongst them. The mistake to start their downfall has started the moment he was set free. They weren't to make machines with free will. They were only to make a real human body for her. Why did they not call the spirit of the great mother? She gave life, sustained it, and nurtured it. Her purpose was to ensure the human race would always have the female aspect for the next part of the journey. 
In this way, it was impossible to separate the male and female aspects that were needed for the human race to live on forever. And they were more careful that their machines didn't become their masters. What terrible masters the cold, unfeeling, unthinking ones he would create would be. They would care for nothing. They would conquer in the name of the destroyer. He cared, for no he cared nothing for any of them. He found entertainment in their obedience to the one they barely understood. He wasn't necessarily evil. He just ensured the planets that failed didn't move out past their home world. Yeah, he's kind of evil. Like He's just going to kill everybody if they mess up. Pretty evil. They would be what we are, but not even real. Programs. No matter how real they seemed. Maybe we should be careful about what we call into our world. It has to be close to that time by now. Hopefully they would see the need for the spirit of the Great Mother, their Great Mother, Eve. That was her name in the current language. I know what you have done to me. I remember her face and her words. The Father is with us. May God have mercy on us. Then she injected something into my arm. I wasn't happy at first, but this body won't last forever. It knows you have done the right thing. He knows you won't have to suffer long. The only question is, why have you brought me here? I have removed all the lines dividing this world and left one. We all live together or we all die together. My nation has stood since the beginning of time. It, it will not fall in this age either. You cannot stop a poor middle-aged man from telling stories and drawing pictures. <laughs> I also know that you've been watching what I do. I added all those crazy notes to mess with your heads. I can't wait to see how many people my stories scare. When my future became uncertain in my eyes, I knew I had a story to tell before something bad happened to me. It's difficult to go from a normal life to having your body fail. The difficulty in walking is the most life-changing event. I had become useless and a burden to the people around me, a burden to my loved ones. There was a point where I wanted to remove myself as that burden, but it would have been selfish of me to give up. I still have a purpose, even as a crippled man, but it's difficult to accept. I have been made to bend the knee. I have been made to fall. I apologize that I have been such a burden. I hope my gifts are an acceptable offer of my gratitude. I am still here and I am still dreaming too. I have created an empire and a vision. There is no greater empire. Now, who among you will walk beside me? I am Michael, the Prince of Earth, and I give to the people freely. I am nothing, I have nothing. Now what will you do? I conquered the world with my poems, and none of them were true. I conquered the world with my poems, and no one ever knew. Now what will you do? I am the time traveler, and I am only human. I am just like you. <laughs> Thank you, and have a good day. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe for more content. And see you next time on Mike's Place.